Hello and welcome to the second episode on interest rate parity in which we are going to take up an alternative definition and as per this definition ladies and gentlemen interest rate parity says that the differential interest rate between two countries is equal to the percentage difference between the forward and the spot exchange rates. Uh, both these variables, my friends, that is the differential interest rates and exchange rates move in opposite direction, thereby implying an inverse relationship between them. Uh, that means to say that as the interest rate differential increases, the currency value for the higher interest rate country should fall. Let us get going by assuming two gentlemen, Mr. Al and Mr. Francois. Mr. Al is going to be our home investor. His home country is the US and naturally his home currency is going to be the US dollar. Mr. Francois is going to be our foreign investor. He belongs to France and his currency is going to be Euro. The domestic interest rate, my friends, that is the interest rate in the US is represented as ID and is equal to 5% and the uh, interest rate in the counterpart country, that is the foreign interest rate represented as IF is equal to 10% per annum. The current or the spot exchange rate represented as E is equal to 1.05 euros to a dollar and the forward exchange rate one period ahead represented as F is equal to 1.10 euros to a dollar. And now let us examine each of these gentlemen's alternatives and their actions by preparing a table like this. And in this table, in this column, we are going to talk about Mr. Francois and in this column we are going to focus on Mr. Al. If we look at the row wise uh, thing we are going to talk about dollar deposits in this row and in this row we are going to talk about euro deposits and then we are going to take a difference between these two alternatives and call it the relative return in this row. Let us uh, go to Mr. Francois first who has decided to bring his money to the United States and invest in dollar deposits. If he does that, my friends, he is going to earn a 5% interest rate. So one part of his return is going to be 5%. And if you observe, uh, the euro has been depreciating uh, during this time period. It has moved from 1.05 to 1.10. So by the time Mr. Uh, Francois is ready to take his money that he has earned in the United States back to his own country, he finds that the euro has depreciated. In other words, dollar has appreciated. So now the question is, does he stand to gain because of this dollar depreciation, uh, dollar appreciation or does he stand to lose because of this dollar appreciation? Naturally, if the dollar appreciates, he is going to be taking home with him something which has appreciated in value and that is a good thing. So therefore, we say that Mr. Francois is going to gain because of this dollar appreciation because when he converts these dollars back to euros, he is going to get more euros. Uh, so, so now let us find out the actual return which Mr. Francois has earned. He has earned a 5% rate of interest. So we write here a 0 0.05 and then he has also earned something because of the dollar appreciation. Let us write down a numerical estimate for that. And for that, I'm going to write here the forward rate 1.10. From this, I'm going to subtract the spot rate 1.05. And then I'm going to divide it by the spot rate 1.05. And that then, my friends, is going to give me a return estimate of 9.76%, which can be broken down into two components, 5% coming out of the US interest rate and this component coming out of the dollar appreciation which is going to be equal to 4.76%. Now instead of uh, coming to the United States and investing in dollar deposits, if Mr. Francois decided to invest just in his home country in euro deposits, he would have earned the interest rate that is prevailing in the eurozone and that would be 10%. Now in this uh, cell of the table, let us find out the relative return that is the difference between these two alternatives. In this alternative here, you earn or Mr. Francois earns a return of 9.76% and in this cell here, he earns a return of 10%. So the difference is going to be 9.76% minus 10% and that is going to give us minus 0.24% as the relative return 
we really need not bother about the negative sign because all we want to find out is the difference between these two alternatives and we know now that the difference in return of both these alternatives is to the extent of 0.24 percent it could have been very easily plus 0.24 percent if we had just written 10 percent here and 9.76 percent here so the sign really doesn't matter in our analysis now let us focus our attention to mr al who decides to first of all stay home and invest in dollar deposits if he does that he is going to earn the domestic interest rate that is the u.s interest rate and that is equal to 5%. So let us write here 5%. And then if he decides to take his money abroad, that is to Eurozone and invest it there, he is going to earn there an interest rate of 10%. And then since the dollar is appreciating, look, the Euro is moving from 1.05 to 1.10. That means Euro is depreciating and that translates into dollar appreciation. So, uh, Mr. Al is earning some return in the Eurozone now and since the Euro is depreciating, he is going to be bringing home with him something which has lost value. Therefore, because of this depreciation in Euro or in other words, appreciation in the dollar, he is going to lose out. Mr. Francois gained because of this dollar appreciation and Mr. Al is going to lose out because of this dollar appreciation. I could have very well written here. Uh, euro depreciation but for the sake of maintaining the consistency since i wrote here dollar appreciation i have written the same thing here let us find out mr al's return from the eurozone in dollar terms he earns an interest rate of 0 0.10 that is 10 percent and then he loses out because of dollar appreciation so i write here 1.10 forward rate minus 1.05 spot rate and then divide by 1.05 spot rate and that is going to uh, give me a return of 5.24 percent and you are going to see clearly again that the difference between these two alternatives is going to be again 5 percent minus 5.24 percent equal to minus 0 0.24 percent so what you observe uh, from here, my friends, is that since the relative return for Mr. Francois and Mr. Al is the same, that is 0.24%, uh, they may as well invest in their respective countries. There is uh, nothing extra to be gained by taking the trouble to invest abroad and negotiate currency fluctuations. So now let us uh, formalize our discussion. Uh, what we can say is that if you invest at home, you earn an interest rate which is equal to the domestic interest rate. We are calling the domestic interest rate as ID. And if you invest abroad, my friends, what you earn is the interest rate in the foreign country, which is IF. And then you are losing out because of the dollar appreciation. So let me write here dollar appreciation. Now you also realize that both these alternatives are equal in terms of their relative returns. Therefore, we can say one more time that the dollar and foreign deposits are perfect substitutes of each other. And therefore, what we can write here is that if you invest at home, you earn ID rate of uh, interest. Let me write that uh, in the equation space. You earn ID rate of interest at home. And if you invested abroad and earned an IF rate of interest, and then lost out because of dollar appreciation, which I'm writing here, then these two alternatives would be the same. Now, what I'm going to do with this equation, my friends, is that I'm going to take this IF to the left-hand side of the equation, and that is going to give it a negative sign. So let me first of all write here ID as it is from above, and then since I'm taking IF to the left-hand side, it becomes minus IF. So I write here minus IF and on the right hand side, I'm going to leave minus and then the fraction F minus E over E. So what you see here is on the left hand side, you have the difference in the interest rates or interest rate differential between countries. And on the right hand side, what you have is the percentage difference between the forward and the spot rate. And as we said before in the beginning, the differential interest rate between countries should be equal to the percentage difference between the forward and the spot exchange rate. That is what the interest rate parity condition is. And that is what we have demonstrated. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you uh, will realize, and I said this in the first episode as well, that the data that I have used has been tailor-made to demonstrate the parity condition. In real life, the data need not confirm the interest rate parity, and in that case, some profit um, can be made through a process known as the covered interest arbitrage, which is not within the scope of this uh, brief video. So we are not going to go into that at this moment. So therefore, it's going to be bye-bye and thanks very much for watching.